Hello and welcome back to Sunday Night Fight. That was a hell of a game one that we just played. And uh, yeah, we're going to go straight into game two. So uh, NTD, roll that video. Hello and welcome back to our second game of the series. Sandland is 1-0 up after the very, very good comeback against Automed's PE. And now in game two we are going to see a vanilla matchup of Automed playing as Americans against Sandland's Wehrmacht. So, Sarge, do you have any uh, sort of predictions or anything you'd like to see in this match? 
I'm very interested to see Sans Vermac play. I don't think I've ever, I can't remember the last time I saw him play Vermac, and I think Vermac play is what's kind of most interesting in this patch, since American players remain largely unchanged in the opening. So I'm curious to see what the hell he does. Well, I've seen Sandline stream quite often, and he has a very, very good favor for Blitzkrieg. You know, loads of Stormtrooper action and uh, good Tiger battles as well. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to put my bets on um, on Blitzkrieg for Sandland. I mean, he's a really crazy guy, and he likes to put a lot of sneaky tactics off as well. So, I'm uh, for, for Automid, I'm not quite sure what his uh, American playstyle is like, so I'm a bit in the gray there, but probably some standard play. Who knows? So, um, yeah, I'm paused at the five-second mark, and uh, I'm ready to kick this off when you are, Sarge. Count us down, mate. Alright, so I'm pausing that 5, and we're unt pausing in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, as always, Angerville, Vermark South, always hold your strap point as well, never let your opponent get inside the house, use wire, tank traps, all other sort of fun stuff, and uh, if you're American, just do your best to harass, I think it's pretty much the most standard, you know, it's like... It's the map that everyone seems to know how to play. It doesn't even matter if you're a Shelt player. You know how to play Angerville. It's true. And I think um, I've got a, a particular uh, soft spot for the left-hand side of Angerville because, you know, I'm not a very good player, but anyone can flank an MG on the left-hand side of Anger. Well, and surprisingly, um, a lot of players have actually gone left-hand side because they like the, the MG and bike opening. And they find it a lot easier because the hedges sort of block the MG, and obviously MGs and houses are like nowhere near as good as they used to be. So sometimes they actually like going left hand side. Like it's um, like the resources are more spread out, so they actually get it takes longer to get all the resources, but it's a lot safer, which is actually quite surprising since I actually prefer the right hand side myself, though. Yeah, I can hear where you're coming from. It's interesting to uh, stand and Ordmed discussing the various merits of uh, European ruins and OMG. Good to hear that the company Heroes Modding community is alive and well. Yeah, I mean, I've never actually played mods, but from what I've seen, because there's quite a few people broadcasting their mods, it actually looks, well, first it looks really crazy. Like, I just see, like, artillery flying, and I see, like, all sorts of other crazy shit that you never see in uh and another thing is that they have like these really cool sound packs, which sound so like they actually sound a lot better than what uh, the original Relic sounds put in for like machine guns and stuff. So it's like, and you should always check them out for for good laugh. You know, I'd I'd never say uh, stick to just vanilla COH and all that stuff. Just you should always try everything. And uh, whoa, I just saw some pioneers teleport inside the house. They didn't even go through the door. They yeah. just went through the wall. Pretty slick move. Hey, I want to give a big shout out to everyone in the channel tonight. Hope everyone's there spamming the troll face, like every week. <laughs> That's actually my favourite part. Probably my second favourite part is giving them all 10 minute timeouts. Ah, by you're a hard taskmaster. I must admit I've had it easy. The last three weeks I've been sitting at home on Sunday night watching SNF thinking, yeah, this is fucking awesome actually, it's much better watching it this way. Now I'm in the channel, I can't troll anybody. Shame. <laughs> A double Volks, uh, looking like they could give these double rifles a bit of a, this is about as classic as it gets pretty much, isn't it? Two Volks, two rifles. There's also a bike in the mix, Except which is one actually of the quite surprising. Oh yeah, one of the rifles is just being a set of pussies and hiding behind the hedge. Okay, they come out now, about time. Nice bike push, but I thought bike pushing only works if you actually fire at the squad while you push them. Yeah, that bike is really well, so you health. better be careful with the pushing. Look at that five-man rifle squad on, like, 10% health. That's bonkers. Frustrating as well, because you can't actually uh, reinforce them. I guess it keeps uh, keeps the vet off for, um... Oh no, what am I talking about? The Mac don't hurt and vet like that. <laughs> keeps the XPs off, that's what I meant. <laughs> Yeah, that's the bad thing about having a five-man squad with so low health, it's like it kind of makes them a useless unit, or like a super de defensive unit, whereas obviously everyone knows rifles like to get in your face, point-blank range, and start firing away, and even then they still, like, fail to hit you. Yeah, and, um, looks like Sans harassing has been going pretty well. 
Ordinaire is able to recap that cut off pretty quickly, no major loss there. And um, these guys traipse across the road. Where's the MG? Oh, the MG's hanging out by the base. Let's push that MG forward in my opinion. Well, it is, the MG is in a very sneaky place. I mean, if he tries to cross over it's going to get suppressed, but then again it would probably be more useful when like there's like all these, like there's a flamer and like four rifles just all clumped up together, you know. That's, He's uh, using the bike to bait. Get, uh, the more suppressed. And I think Ordman kind of guessed it maybe. Because uh, that bike is very low health and complete rifle bait. Yeah, I mean that's the thing, if you make a bait too obvious, most people don't fall for it, but uh... Now with this MG and there's a sniper in the in the uh, in the making in the Vermont quarters, it's going to be pretty. Uh, if he can keep Ordemet at distance, this sniper is just going to be taking free hits and draining manpower all day. Yep. And a little bit of support vet never hurt anybody. Well, apart from the opposing force. Yeah, unless your opponent has um, like if I'm playing against a well-known player who knows who likes to go uh, fast M8, I never go support that. It's just straight to packs, not like you know that that fast M8 will pretty much destroy all so sort of support vet unless it runs into a mine, obviously. But I've seen a lot of support vet strategies work against um, bar openings, and you know your MGs and snipers having like auto health regeneration and like damage bonuses and stuff. You know it really really hurts uh, like heavy infantry openings. I just thought of something. So you know the way you can use like a tank to kill a decrude AT gun by attacking ground? You should be able to use infantry units to kill wounded units by attacking ground. Well, Some sort of execute like move. Hardcore. Yeah, that would just be I like know, so, be so harsh. <laughs> These pioneers just walking around capping all these wounded guys after the firefight. No, that would be, that would be a bit too hardcore really. Yeah, that would easily make this an 18 plus game. Uh, it's already an 18 plus game. I mean, uh, it's the engineers. The engineers are the sole reason. The American engineer unit is the sole reason the game is 18 plus. Ooh! Rifle squad goes down by the American cut off point. Volks and Sniper get the credit. Yeah, Amer American engineers, just the most profane fuckers in the entire game. I think, to um, be honest. I think the Tommy squads actually might be in a good, like, ne like the next contender for that title because uh, I think every single like they say wankers and like all the time, like <laughs> they swear all the time. It's true they do, but you can't beat the old engineer. What was it? Burn those motherfuckers out and shoot any bastard who's too stupid to run. Oh yeah. man, they're hardcore. Yeah, that's true, that. Sniper capping the uh, strap point. Nice, nice, nice. And I'd say, uh, I don't know, I think Ord has a pretty good start here, even though he hasn't got much map. He's been... Hang on, I've got the sides wrong. I'd say Sand has a pretty good start here, even though he hasn't got that much map. He's been very efficient in keeping Ord off the bulk of his resources. Yeah, I mean, he's cut him off, I think this is like the second time, and this time he's been really effective. He's cut him off for a really long time, and he's killed off an entire rifle squad, and as anyone can tell you, if you lose a rifle squad early, it hurts you so much. Yep, yeah, and the flamer and rifle combo is pushing everybody back now. Sniper's also pulling back. Bike comes herring back. What he's going to do at half health other than die gracefully, I do not know. Ooh, mines! Nice mines. Oh, it's, uh, Ord should really spot those as there's two pyros standing right next to each other. Maybe they're just holding hands. MG42 getting absolutely mullered by the flames there. Yeah, there's a couple of well-placed MGs, like, just holding the advances of, uh, of Automed's forces. Yeah, it's really almost unorthodox MG placement. I suppose it isn't really, but they're just sensibly placed. And yeah, the Ord's going to reconnect now. I haven't really talked about the tech, he's got the motor ball up already. Fast M8 and, uh, well, Sandling went straight to Blitz just now. Two CPs in the bank. Wouldn't be surprised if I see, uh, Stormtroopers pop out soon. So, if you're going to go Blitz, it's Tier 3 Blitz in the classic mold of Say No to Stim. Still the preferred? Or is Tier 2 Blitz more in favour now? 
A lot of people still go tier 2 blitz, just because of the fact that they work really well with packs, since, I mean, you pretty much have like, yeah, I'm invisible, and what, you know, so, uh, but then again, Stormtroopers work well with Stugs and Pumas as well, so, basically I think, it's, it just depends on where the Vermite is, if he's ahead, and he has a good amount of fuel, he'll go tier 3, if he, if he's like, mmm, not doing too well, but I'm still in this tier 2 blitz, then, yeah. And again, uh, Sand is straight back on that cutoff. Two Volks and a Sniper with a bike and an MG backstopping. Nothing that Ord has got can currently break through that uh, that force. Nice Minesweepers out as well from uh, Ord. Made a good call there. Oh, and the M8 just hits the field as well now, so... He's going to have to wait till he gets uh, the skirts up in the uh, MG to do a decent amount of damage. But even then, you know, it's going to be... Uh, he has to be careful of a few Fausts. But then again, Stormtroopers aren't out yet, and the and tier 3 is just about to be second. finished. There was a very small window where he could have fousted it without skirts there, but I guess it was never a reality. Two fasts. Good going. Oh, we have a Stug in the making, so this, uh, this nice. MA is going to need an AT gun to, to back him up. And Sandland's going to be doing power slides all over the map. Trying to kill rifles by getting them caught up in his stug treads. And yeah, well, at the um, moment, everyone's cut off from everything. Yep. It's, <laughs> it's true. I suppose all still got those low, um, low munis and, and whatnot up uh, by his base, but yeah. Crazy, crazy map control. I think M8. using those Faust might have been a bit of a mistake though, because he doesn't have enough munitions now if he gets Stormtroopers to get uh, pa Panzer Shreks. So he's only got 35 at the moment, so that could have been a mistake. Maybe he doesn't want to get Stormtroopers, so I'm just saying by speculation. No. Oh, yeah. some mines going off, doing some dirty damage Ooh, on that fuel pool. Double, double mines from both sides. Excellent work. Um, I was thinking maybe the, the Faust was just consciously trying to buy himself a couple of minutes before the M8 could fully hit the field. He knew that two Fausts would send the M8 back, and I maintained that he had a very small window in which he might have been able to get the Faust off without the skirts being up. And if one of those Fausts had hit and skirted, the second one could have been a killer. Yeah, I mean, I think even a non-skirted M8 gets damaged engine from one Faust, so even then, you know, it's, it would have just been sitting duck. Yep. What do you think about the uh, M8 Stug battle that we're about to see? Well, I think this M8 is going to have to be... Oh, no, he knows that there's mines there, so he's like, okay, I'm, I'm not an idiot. I knew you planted mines there, so I can just go across now, and... He's better be careful if he uh, tries to go sniper. over this, because if it under... If the mine uh, decloaks and the M8's on top, then it will be uh, game over, but... Uh, that was very close. Yeah. Awesome, though. And here comes the Stug. We have a Nebelwerfer as well, so uh, some indirect fire to uh, harass some rifles and AT guns maybe. Nice. I remember the time when I first started playing Company of Heroes and I thought Nebels were completely overpowered. I think the first time I ever play used Nebel Wurfers was when I used to spam basic match and play via River Valley and I'd always make my main tactic was make ten Nebel Wurfers and fire them across the water and stuff. Yeah man, when you first start playing coming to Heroes, via River Valley is the shit, that and Saint Hilaire. I mean what were they thinking? A map with fucking five VP points on it. <laughs> Jeep, interesting. That's gotta be a, a, a bit of an anti sniper maneuver. Also works as a good yeah, scout, big gun on the side. Yep. Oh, that, that American force is very blobbed up now. If uh, Sand has got this naval shot right, he could do massive damage. He's lucky I didn't hit anywhere near the... Well, the first shot hit into the house. But yeah, this 18 is now going to have a good time against the stud. Backs off behind the line of sight of the house, which is a good move. What, what waxed the jeep? Was it the... Um, it must have been fasted by the... Uh, yeah, it must have been fasted by the Vox Grenadiers. So 
He lasted yeah. all the, That's the what, thing about thirty seconds. Jeeps, they die so quickly. That stug is starting to put in some work. It's going to need a little bit of repair, love. And with the Puma out as well. So, do you oh, reckon those mines in, in like the middle? Gap? Nice. So, do you reckon those mines in the middle will get destroyed by Ord Med, or do you reckon they'll get accidentally triggered because he forgets they're there? Yeah, sometimes I even forget where mines are when I've seen them be placed. And uh, there's actually Ooh. a funny occasion where I was playing against the. Uh, Sniper's about to get done by the M8. Oh! He's lucky he doesn't have any detection like the Panzer Elite AC does. Yeah, that was he was right on top Ooh, of Oh, that was so close! M8 took a random shot and was just like, yeah, the sniper's on like a 1% health. <laughs> lucky bugger. This AT gun is met its end, so this stug is rolling forward and this M8 is better get the hell out of there. And Sand is uh, upgrading, sorry, Ordman is upgrading stickies. Yeah, it's a good soft counter. Uh, if he gets over aggressive with his stug, he's just going to be like, yeah, you know, damaged engine. Like when he recruits the AT gun, it's easy picking. So, as a US, what would you say the best doctrinal counter to Blitzkrieg is? Airborne, every time, just because of uh, I'm always get scared of stormtroopers ambushing my uh, AT guns and then rolling in with their armor. So I'm like, okay. Uh, do an occasional recon run around my stuff, or just see where his stormtroopers are, see if I should move around or whatever, so... And usually as airborne I don't tend to need that much munitions, because you get supply drops as well uh, later on, so... Just the occasional True. scout to see uh, exactly where all his stuff is. And lots of AT options should the uh, Tiger arrive. Even as an emergency, just power drop them out of the sky. Sticky's on the stug. Yeah, he left that one a bit close. The SMG might go down, though he gets out of there just in time. Oh, the rifle squad onto the mine to damage the stug even further. Oh, but he knows he's there. And you should see that it Pioneer laying on mine there as well. And uh, I was actually going to say earlier, um, I was playing a game against Oasis, and he was laying mines where I could see them, and I told him, you shouldn't do that. And then he was like, don't tell me how to play. <laughs> Yeah, no one likes advice. He probably thought you were being facetious. Oh, a, a retreating rifle trips the mine and gives the stug a damaged engine. And the M8's gonna trip another mine! Out of control. He does like a, some sort of wheelie as he died. Damn. By the way, he got vet warm just before he bought it. Go out in style. That's the way you go. So let's do a quick time sync. I'm at 17 minutes and 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And uh, I'm not sure if we mentioned Forward HQ by uh, Sand right outside the American base. going to be a complete headache for Audi to deal with. Yeah, I mean, the one problem with having such a Forward HQ is that uh, if you attack move a house with 80 guns, if they get lucky they actually three shot the house. Like they just take out chunks of health and then that's goodbye to the FHQ. So I usually like to have my forward HQs about just somewhere I can just return fire a lot easier because I mean that house you can probably shoot it from his base. In which in case he needs to keep the sniper around to uh, pick it off. Jesus I just realized all is down to three rifles, one flame and one AT gun. That's his army. Yeah, I mean, if you look at Sandland, two Stugs, Nebelwerfer, Puma, two Volk Sniper, two Pyros, two MGs. Yeah, that's looking like a deadly force at the moment. Uh, that's 20 kill Sniper, I believe. It's a shit ton of drain manpower right there. Yeah, especially when it's on crucial units like AT guns, because obviously, like, you know. When you shoot two guys down, that's it, the, the third guy just goes emo mode and, and heroes. It looks like Audi's trying to replicate Sand's strategy from the last game of uh, building maybe a sniper, maybe two snipers. to try and take down that Wormack sniper that's been such a pain in the ass. This Nebel looks like it's aimed at the base, the way it was turned. Yeah, it's firing into the base. Yep. And 
vet two support like, uh, units have just been hit. Ah, I called it. Support vet, right there. That um, yeah, that that will make sniper is just serious. Twenty-five, no, twenty-four kills. He missed on the retreat. Yeah, I think once, the, what, once the sniper hits vet three, that's when the the real hurt begins because they get like a forty percent, uh, like shot increase. So you shot decrease on their cooldown. So, and if you actually go terror and do inspired assault, there they shoot once every second. That's crazy. Yeah, I think Audi is really um a bit stuck right now. Oh look, there we go. Uh, did you see that 180 gun shot? Take half the health of that H FHQ, just like that. Just attack moving it. So, and right from his base as well. So. You can continue doing that, and then that FHQ is pretty much gone since you can't repair them. Well, what are those two pyros doing? Oh, they're salvaging. I was looking at the two pyros repairing right behind the HQ. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> no, they were eating up a puma carcass. Was it the M8? I think it was the M8, in fact. Oh yeah, of course it was the M8. The and then you called it Ford HQ down. Just a uh, plinking away with an AT gun did the business. Yeah, see that's that's why ex pretty much an example of why I don't do that. And uh, if anyone ever does that to you guys, just yeah, grab an AT gun, shoot it away, and pretty much that's it. I fixed you down. Veterans game. Still looking at this rate, it looks pretty bad. Yeah, exactly. It's not a major headache for Sand, for um, Sand. He could do it. It's not the end of the world. But um, yeah, Ord is, is not in a good place. Sand Sniper's moving up, and so is the Max Sniper. They're very getting very close to each other. Time to cue the old Benny Hill music. Okay. Oh. One. No counter snipe opportunity. There it is. Here it comes. Ah, he misses the counter snipe. You blew it. Oh my gosh, what was that? And the Stug is hunting him, but uh, without much luck. Puma might do it. No, not close enough. Man, that uh, needle for us. Automated must be going. Automated must be just going mental. Like, literally. I, I go men. I won't lie, I go absolutely mental. So I, all sorts of profanity leaves my mouth when I, I, t I just time a perfect counter snipe and then it misses. I must admit it was good because he also sacrificed an AT gun to achieve the counter snipe because he had to let the second crew member get shot and then just to blow it from there. Unlucky. Yeah. And yeah, with these stugs moving in for the kill, it's kind of really hard to see um, to see where uh, what is going to take it from here. Oh, it takes the stug out. Oh, this stug goes down. But Sand is looking, uh, still looking very, very comfortable. Has he tagged up the T4 yet? Uh, no, he's going for like a heavy tier three play. So I mean, he's put fuel into, he's pumping out another Puma. I mean, if you think about it, he had two stubs, a hundred fuel Puma, another one coming out. So that's like another eighty fuel taking up. It was like another seventy fuel. So a lot, a lot of fuel has been done, including veterancy. You know, so I, w I don't think we'll be seeing uh, like tier four for quite a while. Well, look, I'm not trying to criticise because Audi is an awesome player. He would kick the pants off me any day of the week. But I've got to be honest, he's floating like a mofo. 600 manpower, 270 munitions, 203 fuel. And 5 CPs. I'm just thinking, did he... Maybe he's thinking about Pershing as well? I'm just trying to brainstorm because... That's usually what I do when I float. Like I always have the sort of try and maintain about 500 manpower. So when I hit the Pershing, I just press the button, boom, it's there. But yeah, at the moment it doesn't seem like uh, Pershing coming out anytime soon. But that, then again, I would say that Sandland has six CP, six and a half CPs, and nothing spent. You know, no, usually that means when it gets that late, a player's players like, eh, I might as well get Tiger or King Tiger. You know? Yeah. 
I mean, um, Tiger would really, either Tiger or King Tiger would pretty much put this game to bed at this stage. Sniper count, uh, yeah, Soundland yeah, Sniper's on 27 Audi Sniper, one kill. Yeah, it looks like they're going to be a lot more cautious with snipers once you know, once you, once both players know, okay, each guy has a sniper, play a bit more cautious, but usually the first guy who gets a sniper is like, yeah, I'm just going to, just going to go reckless, just shoot everything, and then suddenly, oh, I got kind of sniped. I was going to say, the Nebel, in, uh, Nebel harassing fire into the base has been really effective. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you see the craters, those were actually mines that Automed lay, uh, laid down in case, like, vehicles tried to get into his base. And uh, Nebelworth actually uh, picked them off, so that was like, you know, 50 wasted munitions. So, you know, the Nebelworth is doing, like, a lot of indirect damage. We are losing ground. It all adds up. Nebel is quite far forward, though. Probing rifles could give it a headache. Oh, the Puma goes down to a well-shot AT gun. American Sniper could be getting overrun. Those Volks are quite close. Especially with the Vermont sniper lurking around there as well, just waiting for the shot. Oh, this okay. Automat, he's only sticking around for the counter sniper. You know, he has to retreat because there's only one guy left. So maybe this rifle coming up now might take bait the shot. And uh, wow, that 18 gun almost killed the sniper. Like that shot landed like really close. Yeah, no. Close, but it I was just really looking damage. at it. Yeah, they, they fixed that in this patch, didn't they? AC guns are not supposed to kill snipers anymore. Yeah, it was like the most... the silliest thing. Sure thing, I'm at 26 minutes and 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 seconds. And... Sad is so ballsy with that sniper. He he knows the American sniper is there, and he's just working it left, right, and center. Yeah, wow. This well, the sniper is actually really close. Like, if the Volks move out of cover anytime soon, they're going to reveal that sniper as well. And uh, what did you really pick up that bot? The there he goes. Yeah, he grabs it. American sniper it looks like he might get away as well. Oh, there's a Goliath hiding there as well. I wonder if he saw it. Oh my gosh, the uh, Goliath! Oh my gosh, he didn't <laughs> see it. No, he sees it. He's chasing it. The Goliath's too slow. <laughs> and here comes the Sherman. Sherman could one-shot the Goliath. No, Sherman misses. Oh shit! Back up! Back up! Back up! And yeah, that, that's the Sherman wow, that's down. That's in half health. But here comes the uh, engineer blob of doom to the rescue. They'll have that Sherman uh, ship's shape in no time. Try saying that three times faster when you're drunk. <laughs> and auto, uh, Sandland steals a and his 57. So, yeah. Now he's got to deal with Stugs and AT guns. In my mind, Sand would really do well to kind of, again, apply the pressure and squeeze on the VPs. Sand is ahead, but not massively ahead and given how dominant he's kind of been um, ooh, rare Perry engineers taking needles to the face that was bad four engineers down um, armor company uh, chosen definitely. by the way um, left hand and side just as you said that uh, something really crazy the, um, Sandland went blitz but he w he's got manpower blitz ready and he has like he's 20 munitions off to active being able to activate it so yeah 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 essentially forget, he's going to have like no 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 supersede all of that sandland just built an officer oh yeah that's true as well well i'm excited i hardly ever see officers in games what are, what's he going to do with him uh I usually just build one just to get veterancy out super fast because they just observe stuff and then build the, the research time is like I think I don't think it's as much as like half the research time but it's a good good amount but um yeah I mean if he's in tier 4 it can lay down artillery barrages and force retreat it's a pretty useful guy I'm actually surprised they don't get used too often 
So sand went manpower blitz, just built T2. What's he gonna do? Start spamming grenades? In fact, he just u activated manpower blitz. We're losing territory. And he's queued up it's three grenadiers squad. <laughs> And he's using the officer oh, to make the, sure they, the they officer, pop. The, yeah, the officer's observing it, so they pop out literally in like 10 seconds each. That's like an insane <laughs> amount of, of grenadiers in like the space of a minute. That's awesome. So he's probably then going to fill them all up with Panzer Shreks and just go and, and rape everybody's face. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's got to be said, Audi's got a, a very good push on the left, managed to completely take back that area, and it's the Stug versus Sherman uh, shenanigans. I think Otto would actually think, where the hell did all these grand f***ers come from? <laughs> yeah. I only just noticed that OP on the plus 10 unis outside the base as well. Sherman's gonna get sticky if he ain't. Sherman's gonna get sticky. Stug's gonna get sticky if he ain't careful. Rifle squad's gonna get down if he ain't careful. Nice. Gets one up on the, the Puma. Messed him up big time. Now there's them ten to join the Sherman as well, and they could really push it into the base. Uh, Sam needs some uh, needs some tracks. can afford some, so you should be able to research, although he isn't researching them on any of his grenadiers at the moment. Ooh, uh, M10 gets immobilized, clipped a mine outside the base, I believe. Could go down, uh, surely, the, the stug will die first. Yeah, and uh, Sanan has the ultimate stolen AT gun creeping up behind the hedge. Haha, <laughs> nice. He's about to get overrun by flame engineer unit though, so maybe not not long for this world. Yeah. I think although it was funny that he used manpower blitz, uh, he's only got a hundred manpower income now, and he can't really reinforce all his guys. And uh, I, I think going for Tiger would have been a, like a hell of a lot more, you know, just more efficient at finishing this game off. I think going manpower blitz may have even brought, brought a comeback opportunity, but. Yeah, it seems Ordemd is just really all over this at the moment. Sherman in the base, you know, he's um, just got the Pershing available, uh, he's about 300 manpower away from it. Man, Vet 2 officer better do something. Well, officers don't fight, they just tell people what to do. Yeah, so tell dude to shoot Shreks faster. Yeah, supervise the Grenadier squad so it just shoots like five Shreks in one go. Damn, that Sherman is messing up that Shrek squad. Well, I think yeah, he's overextended himself. Go yeah, destroyed engine. That's gotta be it. <laughs> Field repairs could save the day. Oh no, he repaired the destroyed engine as well, like, in like nothing. Main gun destroyed again. <laughs> Shrek, oh, next that up is the front the armor. Luckiest. Wow, that is some ballsy play. That is the luckiest Sherman driver ever. Nice harassing, um. Harassing fire coming in. Oh, and that mine in the middle gets deactivated by minesweepers. Was not to be. Ooh, American Sniper nearly gets messed up. Holy hell, Sandland Sniper, 31 kills. Chilling out by the plus 10 fuel in the uh, right hand side. Knows this fight is not for him, he's deserved a break. Yeah, Sandland Sniper's always seem to rack up loads of kills whenever I see him play. It's just something that he's so good at. Yep, yeah, Sniper Micro is definitely an acquired art and you've really got a... Oh come on, don't kill the MG with the M10, that shouldn't work! Oh, oh Pershing, Pershing says hi! <laughs> 10 kill MG, about to get waxed. There you go. 
Another manpower blitz has been done and supervising two stugs and a pack in production. It's probably a better option actually. Double Shrek's, uh, double two Shrek squads in the house. So Shrek's get an accuracy. Wow! Four of them get killed at once. Shrek's get an accuracy boost when they shoot from a house, is that correct? Uh, yeah. They shoot, they end up hitting stuff a lot more of the time. It's like, like, I'd say about eight out of ten times they'll usually hit. Yeah, and, uh, definitely laid some hurt down on Ord's, Ordi's armor force, but, uh, it's not in the world, they'll be able to come back. These thugs are in trouble, I reckon, against the Pershing. Like, uh, the pack's gonna be doing a decent amount of damage, but since they got nerfed, they won't be doing too much against, you know, a Sherman and a Pershing. And can you afford uh, good repairs again, just in case? Uh, yeah, he's got 354 munitions. Yeah, so there we go. Let's do another quick time sync. I'm at 35 minutes and 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 seconds. So yeah, this Pershing sees all the studs in the pack, and he's just like, "Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna back off a bit." And the uh, Audi sniper there has just kind of been so uh, neutered by the fact that he's had to be cognizant of this uber 31 kill sniper that Sandland's fielding, he hasn't really had a chance to shoot too much stuff. Yeah, I mean, he sort of feel, felt like, well, I've shot so many guys and now there's Pershings and stuff, I can't really shoot anyone anymore. Ooh, Blitzkrieg! Oh, Blitzkrieg! Ah, oh, that's nice. Oh, hey, look at the BPs! I don't can save you! The BPs yeah, are really low. Down. And yeah, this stuff, I've just noticed now, uh, only 87 Ooh, people in the bank for Attention. The enemy what, what killed Sni- what killed Ordmed Sniper? It wasn't a counter snipe. It looks like- well, it, been it must have been either the MG. Yeah, it must have been the MG. Ordmed saying it was bugged, it wasn't firing properly. It did appear that he was standing there, uncloaked, farting around. It's usually what snipers do so, yeah. half the time. Yeah, I think Audi's just realised he's down to 72 VPs and maybe he ought to do something about that. Oh, officer force retreating, <laughs> doing a little bit of fun. <laughs> I know he's capping off his Luger as he runs up there as well. You know what's actually crazy is, um, the pack uh, crew gunner, so the guy that's not actually manning it with his Lugo, he actually tends to headshot rifles in the like instantly quite often. Yep, yeah, it's about uncanny. He probably spends a lot of time practicing back in the Kriegs barracks. Secured sector is under attack. Looking back, I think the overall loss of the Pershing was really detrimental. I think if he, like, just backed off a bit, got it repaired to full health, two stugs wouldn't have been a pr too much of a problem with backed up with an M10, but it was sort of just yeah. stuck there with a house behind him, you know, a pack shooting away, really low health. Yeah, there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> but it's Krieg again! Popped on these, um, trying to get these Shreks to help take out. Ooh, Sherman, and he gets reverse blocked by the stug who seems to be attempting to insert himself into the uh, in an uncanny way. Um, Audi could pop AWM. There it goes! Oh, what a time! Awesome timing. That was awesome, he left it so late. I like the way the Stug and the, and the Shrek squad are sort of, sort of going, yeah, we're just going to come straight to the calling point. See what's there. Yeah, I mean, you should never put AWM well. too early. Go on, officer, supervise someone. Ooh, blah, 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 Pershing! That uh, officer shooting at the Pershing with the Luger. Ooh, oh, no. <laughs> officer! 
gets all wasted by the Pershing. He was trying to do a Tom Hanks. You know, we'll shoot at this super tank with a pistol, see what happens. <laughs> Unfortunately, he just thought, you know, maybe my death would inspire my troops. Through, like, through martyrdom. Yeah. Oh, and the sniper's in a bit of trouble if he gets sniped from Richard. Oh, oh he died. alas! Pershing shot to the derriere, not a good day out. Uh, 44 VPs. Uh, yeah, Audio really wants to make sure these tick down. He's got a little expeditionary Volksgrenadier force heading up the other side to attempt the decap, and there's nothing over there. Audio's still fairly low on forces. Two engineers, three rifles, an AT gun, the Pershing, and a Sherman. Yeah, Senna's been, like, really outnumbering him throughout the mid game onwards, to be honest, with, like, mid game he had, like, Pumas, Stugs, and. Well, like just machine gun sniper just killing off 32 guys and uh, now it only seems like uh, Automator's only real comeback is with his pushing. We're losing territory. Yeah, and whatever he's going to do, he wants to do it quickly. The VPs are seriously taking down against him now. Yeah, you should make a jeep and just get raid. Yes, exactly what I was thinking. There's no problem in this company here as they cannot be sold by a liberal application of Jeeps. Still, I really liked his uh, Allied War Machine type timing because when I've been playing Panzer Elite and I go for like Panther Battle Group and Jag Panther and against his Pershing and two M10s and I practically almost kill everything and he pops AWM too early, I just attack ground somewhere else and then he sits there with damaged engines and everything and then when it wears off I just finish them all off again. So. Always good to do uh, like a last split, like not too last split second timing, but close enough till it's dead that he won't react in time. It is pretty slick. I really liked the one last week as well, the Cepha game. Now, who was it who built the Pershing that got uh, engine disabled outside the Panzer Elite base? And he didn't destroy it, but he just kept the engineers from repairing it. Oh yeah, that was, that was slick. Uh, mortar off track. Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, that was awesome. Another Blitzkrieg assault straight into the Pershing, not the Pershing, the Sherman. Yeah, long range uh, Shrek shots doing the business. That Sherman could go down. Yeah, yep, there Sherman is, is toast. Off. Might end up losing um, one of those AT guns if you ain't careful. AT guns, I mean Stugs. But well, this Pershing is in a really tough spot. It's got two Stargs and a Shrek squads, like covering its retreat path, and a pack as well. And behind, we see some rifle, oh, a huge rifle push from oh. the back. Look at that, complete flank. That um, everything is going to get decrewed. Ooh, officer forced retreat, but it only worked on one squad. Does it only work on one squad at a time? Yeah, it's one squad for 50 munitions. So you know, it would be so overpowered if it was like a group for 50 munitions. Yeah. Oh, and this star is going to get hit by a rear end and front by a AT gun and push. Yeah. Body oh, Shrek's missing. Stug goes down, but the Pershing still could be in trouble from the Shreks. Looks like he's had another a officer distance. retreat. But Audi really has to hold that VP. If he loses that VP now, he's 35 munitions. It really can take down. And again, there's bugger on the left-hand side. One pioneer squad. Ooh, Kalapi's available. He's got the manpower to bring it in. Mm, I think the bigger problem is looking at Sandlands. He's got... He can afford almost a, uh, another manpower blitz in about 30 seconds. And he's like... Seven-eighths away from a Tiger tank. So even if he doesn't afford the manpower, he can just manpower blitz it in. And uh, he's got Vet3 tanks. So, yeah, that's going to be a big trouble for the Pershing. And Sand is also cognizant of the VP situation. He's going out for the far left VP. There's nothing over there. Rifles are going to reset the northerly VP on the right-hand side. But all of that is irrelevant. They need to get someone on the left-hand side as well. It's forcing Sand to split his forces. So this officer is going to... Is he going for another... Yeah, he's going to go for another force retreat. So, yeah, that yeah. must be so annoying to have like just the little unit that can just force you off VPs instantly like no need for machine guns just point and click see you later 
Yeah, and he's successfully going to cap the left-hand VP immediately and get chased off by two rifle squads. But it doesn't matter, it all kind of works down. 23 VPs for Audi. He really needs to pull this out. Sandland is running rampant here. He's going to white up the left-hand side, but he needs to get like a, prop a, a natural deep, like, capture VP by himself. Yeah. He's working on the normally one as well. Working, he's actually working on the southerly one as well. Oh, another force retreat. Yeah, the officer being used to its best. Yeah, Sandland's officer play is absolutely uh, phenomenal. Pershing looks like it's going to go down. Pat gets overrun just while still putting shots down on the uh, on the sh on the Pershing. But yeah, you got to figure this um, combined stug. Oh, Calapi! That's just some good shots in that stug. If the stug, yeah, just goes forward and t takes off that last killing blow. Oh, and it misses. Fail. Damn, man, Sandlands Naval Warfare's got 23 infantry kills. Heavy assault forces ready. Oh, manpower bits, so, Tiger. Holy shit, all these down to 8 CP, 8 VPs left. I think this Tiger is going to be the nail in the coffin, because there is no way that you can hold off 8 VPs with a Vet 3 Tiger roaming around. This is true, and the Tiger's going immediately to the left, he's going to force that rifle squad. The Volks and the NG's are going to cap, Volks and the Pi's going to cap, that'll be it, GG right there. Mm. Yeah, it's going to force at least Ultimate to act and rush the southern VP. Otherwise, you know, it's it's going to go through two Stugs and Nebelworth. The two Stugs are doing an average job of taking on the Pershing. Would help if that other one well, wasn't taking AT gun hits to the face. Yeah, I mean, like, what that Stug might go down. It's, it's almost dead. Oh, one of the, the left hand side one, okay, so the Pershing on the right hand side is probably going to go down in a few shots. Uh, this rifle squad's gonna go down as well, though. They had just guarded that last VP to their life, so... Yeah. I don't know, I just can't see how Audi can get out of this. I mean, it's it's so tight, VP-wise. Not tight, as yeah. in he's tight. He did a good job, one. though. I mean, he, he, did, he reacted accordingly, took the southern VP, killed two stugs in the process in a bunker, so... But then uh, now he's just got a, well, there's another Calliope barrage on this Grenadier squad, and everything seems to be missing. Yeah, I hate it when Callies do that. <laughs> it's like made a sort That's of little arc of fire, and it's just gone yeah, everywhere the but the little Grenadier. Right in the middle of it. Crazy. I'm really cool that Sand rebuilt the officer after losing the first one to a Pershing shot in the face. Yeah, it's paid off though. I mean, like, it's force retreated three or four times now on the VPs. Okay, so what is Sam going to do? Sun on the VP on the right hand side is mostly clear. There's only just one rifle squad in the Pershing there hanging out. Still, this Vet 3 uh, Tiger can easily take on the Pershing, like, head to head, no problem, so. Yeah, it'd help you know, if he pointed himself the right of... way. Yeah. <laughs> well, the Calliope's going forward. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna attack you with my coaxial machine gun. Oh, right hand side, Solid VP. He's being capped by the officer. Yeah. I think that's gonna be it. There's no way he's gonna have enough time to uh, cap anything else by the looks of it. Yeah, Tiger's occupying uh, occupying the information in the middle. Not occupying information, occupying attention in the middle. Well, this Tiger may go down before the game is over. Yep. Uh, Sandland calls GG. Oh, that's bad manners. You're not supposed to call GG if you're the one winning. Yeah, I concur, actually. Terrible manners, but I'm sure that these guys know that it wasn't meant out of a... Uh, 
Out of bad manners, he just knew that the game was over. I'm sure he wasn't Indeed. trying to rub his face in it. But yeah, no, that annoys the living... that the tiger died. Yeah, maybe. But that annoys the living hell out of me. Someone calls GG to me before the end of the game, and it's just it's middle finger straight up. Yeah. So, another very... Would I say dominating game by Sandlands part? You certainly did have, seem to have control over most of the early to mid game. Then Automated made a really good comeback with the with the Pershing since uh, he went Santa went manpower blitz and yeah it was funny to see like what was it three or four Grenadier squads pumped out in uh, ten seconds but uh, yeah I think NTD downloaded the Axis wins video so if he's got it roll that video for the first time ah, okay so he still doesn't have it unfortunately so we've missed Just the out ultimate on the perfect dictate. opportunity yeah exactly like it's, people people are like going we're never gonna see the Axis wins video. Is there even an access win videos and they're just tricking us? Who knows. In any case, that was game two, so Sanan is now 2-0 up and he needs one more game to finish off this series and Automed needs to really pull something out of the bag here on uh, the next game. So we'll be right back in a few minutes. Don't go anywhere.